Hey YouTube, welcome to another Comic Book Community 411, and my special guest is Mr. DJ Lynx. DJ, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Brian. Uh, appreciate the invite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I invited myself, let's be honest. <laughs> no, it's great, great, great to have you. Good, good to sit down, you know, with you and 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 you know, talk one on one. But before we get into the questions, uh, anything, you know, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about your yourself, your channel, you know, a little, little intro, little intro. Thank you. So I am DJ links, uh, YouTuber, content creator, all that other good stuff. Uh, I have my channel. I started my channel in April of 2020. I'm part of the COVID class or, you know, I'm a COVID baby. Like most of us, uh, got into YouTube. Uh, I, I, in the beginning I was churning out content nonstop, but you know, I kind of got burnt out a little bit. So I kind of scaled back. So I put out a video on Mondays, a video on Wednesdays, and then I have my live show in the mix on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern, which I'm, you know, super proud about. One of the other things with my channel that I'm super proud about as well is the Link Squad, which is my channel membership, where we're at like 75 members, 76 members, and um, I, I, I try to make it like the best channel membership ever on, on you know, on YouTube and make sure that my channel members get value. Uh, the Links box that I put out every month is, is insane. It's, yeah, so... That's like one of my main focuses is the channel membership and also like, like, you know, the videos Monday, Wednesday and in the mix with my guys, Nick's Kicks and Comics, Remy Q Studios, Tyler and Mark from Legion of Comics. So and, you know, we have a great rapport and we try to make the show entertaining, if not anything else. Yeah, no, I, you know, the Friday, the Friday in the mix show is a great show and, and very generous. You know, like you said, the whether you're doing the giveaways for non-members, just the people hanging out in the chat or the. You know the link. The links box is always, you know, it's a pretty big stack. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. I mean, I, I take pride in that. I remember when I was first putting the channel membership together. So I strategize a lot, and it's something I guess you know we can dive into and things like that. So I'm always planning everything out, strategizing. And one of the things was like, how can I be like the best channel membership? Apparently, I'm super competitive. This is what my wife tells me, which is news <laughs> to me. And um. Yeah, I always just wanted to have like the best channel membership or or have the, the channel members get the best value for their book. And then like on in the mix, then I start feeling bad, right? So I'm like, here's this links box, everybody else in the chat, you're not going to get anything. So we're kind of trying to turn that around and make sure everybody has a chance at at something. So if, if you're going to support me, I want to support you in kind. Nice. All right. So let's, uh, let's jump into the question. So, um, the, on the 411, what we do is we have four questions that we always ask all the guests, and then we have two two random questions. So the first question always is, you know, how did you get into comic book collecting? That's a great question, and I attribute that to my, my older brother. So I'm a child. Of, there's five of us. I'm the middle child, so I got no love whatsoever. Um, I have two. <laughs> I'm the youngest brothers. of five, so yeah. I got all the love. Oh, so you're the baby. Yeah, I'm the, yes, that's exactly what they called me. I automatically resent you, sir. <laughs> no, I tease. Uh, my sister is the baby, so she's the last. And once my sister was born, like my parents forgot about all of us. <laughs> um, so I have two older brothers. I'm the middle. I have a younger brother. And then, like I said, my sister's a baby. So my older brother, he had comic books. He didn't have a crazy amount of comic books. He maybe had like 10 or 11. And when he would, you know, start going out at like 13, 14, going do stuff. And I would sneak through his like cabinet or whatever. And I would take the comics and I would read through the comic books. And it was uh, like a web of Spider-Man. I think it was number 23. That's the only number I remember. But there was a G.I. Joe, a Batman, a Daredevil, the 25th anniversary one with the, all the characters around the border. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The border. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I just, I just love that. And then you know, he got of the age chasing girls, doing whatever. So he just gave me the books and I was like super happy about that. And right after that, when I started getting money, if I could make like little money here and there doing stuff like chores around the house, stealing change out my dad's ashtray, if I'm going to be honest, <laughs> I, I would go to the comic book store and I would, uh, you know, I, you know, my grandfather, God rest his soul, whenever I saw him in the store, whatever, I'm just like, give me a dollar. give me, And it was all for comic books. And, um, that really like kind of fostered the love and my mother never said no so my mother would get pissed off and like walk me all the way to the comic book store it wasn't like around the corner and fun fact this is the only comic book store it was on Myrtle Ave between Clausen and Emerson that you had to get your comics behind bulletproof glass oh jeez 
which was insane. And um, I got really into it. And then kids in school started talking about it and bringing books in. And we were trading books here and there and stuff like that. And um, I kind of fell out of it in the middle of junior high school. Then I got back into it in high school. And then when I found out, like, you can get money for these things, I, I, I sold them all, got back into it um, toward the end of high school. And then I, I had my daughter. So I had my daughter really, really young. I, I was 18 when my daughter was born. And I, yeah, and I sold, like, all, all my stuff. Yeah, yeah. priorities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely priorities. And then um, fast forward in, the, like, the mid-2000s, I got back into it again, and then I was reading, I got into graphic novels. I was reading and then I wind up selling those on e Like I would read something and then I would just sell it on eBay. Uh, and then fast forward a couple of years later, I want to say this is around 2015, 2016. Uh, I would go to Midtown Comics, the Times Square location, right? On 40th and Broadway or 7th or whatever it is. And I would go in to look, because I was collecting hot toys at that point. Mm, and I, I would go, yeah. So I would go in, I would look around look at some books here and there, but not really the books, but always go upstairs and look at the statues, look at the hot toys. And then one day we had a work function. So me and my boy, Richard, shout out to Richard. We get drunk. And what does a drunk nerd do instead of going off and doing something crazy? He, he goes to the comic book store and I picked up a couple of graphic novels of crossed um, from avatar comics, which is like very adult, violent, insane comic books and i remember getting them so i picked up like volume one two and three and i'm paying uh at the register super embarrassed like if i was doing like something wrong if i were if i was buying nudie magazines and then the guy's just like yo are you okay mind you i was drunk and i was just like this is a, i'm getting back into comics like whatever and um he just was like really with crossed and i was just like just put it in the bag please sir <laughs> and then fast forward I started buying slabs. So my wife got me some slabs for Christmas one year. So I started collecting slabs. So even before like the whole YouTube stuff, I had like a bunch of slabs I already had at the time, uh, ASM 300, a Hulk 181, a couple of bigger books, and then getting into the YouTube stuff and hearing everybody talk about new comic book day. You know, I was just like, I want to be in the conversation. So then I started getting new comic books and there's no turning back. <laughs> like I'm, I'm fully entrenched. I'm loving it. I feel like I missed out on so many good storylines, so many good things, so many good conversations. And, um, I'm glad that I was able to jump in and go back and start picking up some stuff, new stuff. And then at the same time, going back and picking up some old things as well, specifically right. reading. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I mean, I had similar, I was out for a while and now, you know, I feel like I'm playing catch up, trying to stories that I've missed over the years. And, and, you know, cause you hear people talk about a certain book or storyline and you're like, Oh, well, I need to go back and, you know, read that now. So like, yeah, yeah. definitely. One of the things like my older brothers and stuff, for some reason I was conditioned not to read any DC. So <laughs> it took up, uh, up to the last year where I really like dove into DC and I'm just looking up there. Cause all my graphic novels are up there. Um, that Batman new 52 run, like Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo. That's probably my favorite run of all time. And um, damn you, my siblings, for telling me not to pick up DC. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I, I bet I was pretty much a Marvel guy too. But mm -hmm. although my, I think Batman was my first um, exposure to a superhero, so I always had a I always had a soft spot for Batman, but I never really read a lot of Batman. But yeah. So then, how did you make the leap? Uh, you know, you're back into collecting 2016, 17. Then, so then how did you make the leap to say, all right, now I want to start, you know, putting videos up on YouTube and, 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 you know, come up with a channel. Yeah, that's a, a great question. I think for me, it definitely came with obviously with COVID, right? So what I used to do prior to COVID at my company that I still work there and stuff like that. So I was in charge of the video pr production arm of my company, right? So I was the director of video production there's no surprise there. <laughs> so when that, when COVID hit and all business just halted, the company was in danger of closing down. And I thought, I'll be, I thought the world was going to end, man. Like this shit, shit was scary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Shit was, I'm trying to be nice about it. It was like, I thought the world was going to end. I'm, I, I, you know, watch a lot of conspiracy videos on YouTube mm -hmm. as well. I go down those rabbit holes. So I'm like, the world is going to end. What do I do? I need a distraction. 
And basically, uh, you know, go, my friends were telling me about, you know, I should do YouTube for a long time, uh, especially with the Hot Toys reviews. And I don't, I just needed a distraction. Like waking up every day during those first two months of the pandemic, it was just like, and watching the news, it was like the most depressing thing ever. So I was like, you know what, let me order some comic books. Let me open this. I did a ton of research research before I even started uh, the channel, um, wa you know, watching a lot of Wink Inc. Wink Inc. is my guy, a lot of Gem Mint, big shout out to Gem Mint. And, uh, you know, Franchise Kicks at the time, uh, the Dorkeries, I think they already had their channel. And just watching those people, and I was just like, you know, I could do this. Not that it was anything easy. I was just like, this looks cool, and I could do this, and this could be a distraction. It um, keeps my editing skills sharp, right? Mm -hmm. So that right. that's a big component of it as well. And that's something that like you you have to keep on doing, or else you kind of get dull, if that makes any sense. And um, one day I, I ordered some mystery boxes from that Spider Man booth, and the <laughs> the rest is history. Those first couple of videos were rough, but I'm glad that I'm glad I took the leap. Had I had I waited for a ring light, had I waited for the proper camera, had I waited for a monitor or a nice microphone. I would have never done it. So I'm glad that I put out that first video as terrible as it was. That was the catalyst to get me where I am today. And I'm, I'm glad that I took that leap. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I mean, I, right. I think that's what a, a lot of people's advice is when you're first starting something, right? Is sometimes it's not going to be perfect. You know, day one, you got to kind of just jump in and, you know, get your feet, you know, get your feet wet and then go from there. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think, I, I, absolutely, dude. <laughs> I think if you look back at anybody's first, you know, first couple months of videos there, typically you know they're typically rough yeah it's funny a, a couple of months ago well this is maybe a year ago uh i'm going back and forth with remy so i i watched his first video and i left a comment on it so that he messages me he's like dude like why are you watching my first video it's terrible okay. and i was like have you seen my first video and then he just writes back like the the, the laughing crying emojis like <laughs> a whole bunch of like, <laughs> those first videos were rough yeah i i don't and i don't tend to do that um you know, unless somebody says, oh, I did a video and there's a uh, certain something that they talked about, I might go back and take a look. But, um, I, you know, you, there's so much new content to, to watch that yeah. I don't find myself going back and watching older stuff. But yeah. it is if you if you need a good laugh, you know, go go check out everybody's older stuff. Yeah, no, facts. <laughs> so, um, OK, so back into collecting YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, what about... Uh, a, a character if you if you had creative control over a character or could rewrite mm -hmm. a character i know you're a big hulk fan mm -hmm. um who would you who would you try to tackle it's funny right because i i watched this show <laughs> and i'm <laughs> act, i'm like surprised by these questions it's like what like i i watched like a bunch of episodes this, this week just to to make sure that i'm on point um thanos definitely thanos right so mm -hmm. i i like in thinking about this, I was just like Thanos is, you know, the big evil person, whatever. But I would spin it as if he was just like, you know, like a general of like an army on Titan. And there's like this is going to sound so stupid, but there's like an asteroid going to destroy Titan. Right. So then it's just like make it kind of like a classist story where it's just like the top half of society wants him to find a solution you know, for them to, to save them. Right. And, um, it's like, I don't know, send nukes to the freaking asteroid, whatever, blow it up, just make sure we survive. And I would make it like, he, he, he's like, all right, I have a plan. Um, you know, we're going to get all these spaceships. We're going to send you out to a planet that we discovered that's habitable. And that'll be the new Titan creates all these ships um sort of like this the sanctuary two which are massive massive ships puts all that top class in there there's surprise there's nukes on the bottom of the, of the ship and just sends them right to that asteroid and then the asteroid blows up all the you know rich assholes are dead and then he saves that second half of the population that's left on titan so it's still kind of like a play on snapping away half of you know right, right. planet's population but it's just like a twist right because it's like History is written by the victors. So in that instance, he'll be heralded as a hero to the people that are left as, as, on the planet. So that would be my little spin on Titan. Wow. And I like it. I don't know if anybody's really gone into that amount of detail. So I appreciate that. Usually it's, you know, very, very general, you know, not that, you know, it sounds like, like you said, you're very competitive, very, 
planned out. So you actually have like a synopsis of a story, which is not no, usually what how people answer it, but I like it. It was good. No, nobody steal my shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm like, wait a minute. That's a, that's a phenomenal idea. Like, what the hell? <laughs> I like it. I would read that. Holla at me, Marvel. <laughs> Um, what about one thing, you know, whether in the comic book community itself or, uh, in collecting something that you, you dislike. Mm. Something that I dislike, uh, whether it's, it's, it's the comic book community life in general, I always seem to have a disdain. <laughs> this is a strong word towards people that cut corners or people that cheat and people that don't want to do the hard work and expect the same results as the people that do do the hard work. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, let's, let's talk about shortcuts and, and like, I've seen um, like people start out, like you have 200 subs and then all of a sudden you have, 1008 subs the very next day and you didn't put out like a you didn't put out like a controversial video or something that's going to drive traffic to your channel and you remain at that number for the next eight or nine months so you know buying subs is a real thing and that kind of, like that disheartens me and i know having conversations with other people it, it disheartens them as well because we're grinding and like I said, whether it's in the community, YouTube, in life, like you have to put the work in. I have no problem going to sleep at two o'clock in the morning, waking up at six o'clock in the morning, balancing my real job, balancing, editing my videos, doing my content, other side jobs that I'm doing as well. And hopefully, you know, down the road that pays off. I have no problem grinding. There's a lot like big shout out to Mark from Legion of Comics. He has the same mentality. And I think that's why we gel really well like you just have to grind like you're not going to see any results if you just phone it in like it's the same thing with like trying to lose weight or something like that you have to work hard and the people that take shortcuts i i yeah dude i that really really bothers me no i i, I can i can relate to that i mean uh, i think you know, I, I think people almost expect when they start YouTube channels because, you know, we, a lot of us focus on sub numbers and, and view hours and things like that. Right. Because, you know, I think for most people, the goal is to hit the, the 1000 and get monetized because that changes things that opens yep. up different different things for a channel. But, you know, my advice to anybody that says, oh, well, give me, you know, give me some feedback or advice for my channel. It's always you just need to be consistent, you know, like. Like you said, you you do a, a Monday, Wednesday video and then a live stream like you're consistent. So your audience knows and you're putting out content every every week, I think. And that's always my advice is like you can't put out a video every you know four weeks yeah. and expect your, you know, your channel to be blowing up because, it, you know, people people need to see more and they and, and you need to be consistent. So. Yeah. So if I can piggyback on that, I, I agree with you 100 percent. You have to be consistent. You also can't be complacent, right? And what I mean by that is you always have to look for areas to improve. And automatically people think YouTube, people think, oh, video editing, I need to improve my video editing. That's not what I mean. Like just the way you talk to the camera, like on YouTube, you can look for tutorials of anything, right? So look for videos on like presence and public speaking, things like that. Like, yeah, sure. like your gestures, your eye focus onto the camera, things like that changing up things in your video, your lighting, your background, just any little thing that you can improve upon, just improve it. And I also want to say maximize whatever tool that you have at your disposal. There's a bunch of free softwares out there. Maximize those free softwares. Never just settle for, you know, I'm going to do this, that, and the third, and then that's good enough. Never settle for just good enough or just because you want to get something out there. What happens is, and I saw Marcus had mentioned this on uh, this very show, you have to respect your audience. We're in a transactional business, this YouTube thing, right? Our content is our product. The person that's receiving that content on the other end, you want to respect them. You want them to get something that they're going to see, they're going to enjoy, they're going to want to come back for more. And um, definitely educating yourself and improving it's, it's a great way to get your content seen by more people. And that goes back to putting the work in. You have to put the work in. 
No, I'm, I'm, I, I agree with you. I mean, you, you know, comic, uh, new comic book day is a big one, right? Everybody shows off their new comic book day, you know, books or Wednesdays, you know, typically a very busy day on YouTube, but you know, everybody's doing that or most people are doing that. And so you're not really being unique, although maybe the books that you pick up may be different than somebody else, but it's kind of like, there's so many different videos of people showing off their new books yeah. that, yeah, you need to find something that, that, and to Marcus's point, that people want to watch, right? Yeah. Um, you know, CGC unboxings typically do well because mm -hmm. people want to see grades. They want to see, you know, nice slabs, things like that. But, um, you know, so there are certain niches of, of content that I think do well, but mm -hmm. not everybody buy slab books. Not everybody, you know, has the money to do that or um, so, yeah, yeah, I think finding what is what your viewers want, right? Mm -hmm. What, what, what do they want to see? And yeah, then be good at it, right? Improve no. and be good at it. <laughs> absolutely. And you also have to, because you mentioned new comic book day, you also, you also have to know when to walk away from something or when to drop an idea. So I used to drop new comic book day haul videos and, um, my schedule was getting crazy. So I was just like, what can I sacrifice? And I was just like, you know what? I don't necessarily enjoying doing those videos. Mystery boxes, CGC hauls, all those videos are things that I enjoy doing. And that's expressed through the way I, I come across in the content. Like you tell my, you know, there's a satisfaction to me opening up those boxes. New comic book day, I was just like, I don't really enjoy it. It's just a, a you know Thursday video just so I could have four videos a week. Ah, I'm gonna drop that. And then I went to to shorts. But in dropping that, I was able to take that time that I got back and really refocus it onto the other two videos that I was dropping during the week. And I made little tweaks here and there, little improvements, changed the camera angle, new music, whatever it is, just so I could maximize that time that I got back. You, you have to be self-aware. And if something's not working, walk away from it. If something is working for you, lean into it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I think even going back and watching your own videos, right? I don't typically go back and watch my, my own videos. You know, I'll, I'll put it together and then I'll, I'll throw it out there, but I, I don't go back. And I started going back because I'm coming up uh, on a, you know, my thousand subscriber giveaway. I, I was, thank you. I was trying to go back and look at some of the videos or pull some clips from some of the old videos. And I was like, wow, I was really bad. Like not so much just the setup, but like you said, being, being aware of connecting with your audience and, you know, just the way I, I wasn't really looking at the camera right. And I'm like, wow, why would anybody want to watch this? I don't look like I'm like, I'm really engaged. Like I'm excited to be here doing this. So why would a viewer want to spend their free time watching me? So, yeah, I think, you know, being your, your, your own worst critic is probably, you know, the best advice that you could give somebody. Yeah, I highly recommend watching your videos even after because we're living with the videos as we're editing them and then we just forget stuff. Right. But going back to your video, like maybe a couple of days later or a week later watching it, you're going to pick up on things that you were like kind of blind to the, during the whole editing process or the creation process. I think learning from your mistakes is is paramount to improvement. I think reading all your comments and not dismissing the hater because we're always going to get like troll comments or like hater comments, right, right. comments. There's a, there's a shred of truth to that. So, you know, I, I got in the beginning, yo, your music is too loud. I can't hear shit, yo. And, uh, you know, in the beginning, I was just like, ah, whatever, F this person. And then I was just like, let me go back to these videos. And my music was too loud. So there's kind of a shred of truth to that, unless it's just some troll ass dude just, <laughs> you know, just trolling. But, um, yeah, so basically you have to be open to feedback as well. And if, um, even if, you know, we're talking and, you know, I throw like a little shot at you or something like that about, oh yeah, your video the other day, <laughs> like just be aware of that and just take right. that back right. and, and be like, damn, like, I know he was joking, but there has to be something there and just go back and watch that video and see if there's anything that you can improve, improve upon. I'm dude, I'm big on Im improvement and education and just figuring out like how to like, like move forward. Like I'm always thinking about what's the next thing. Like I approach this as a business in making, making sure the customer, which is the viewer is always satisfied. Not as a business as like making money or things like that, but 
from a customer service perspective, I want to give the viewers the best product possible. And that's what I'm always thinking about, man. Just the satisfaction of the viewer. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good way to be. I mean, one of your, so it was the, the, you're in the mix after the comic book community awards from last year. Mm -hmm. Uh, big, I think Biggie Shaq was on, you you, you had a, you had a panel Mm -hmm. and you guys, you know, kind of critiqued the, the awards. And I loved it because it was, it was fresh in my mind. It was like the week after. And one of the things I think you mentioned was that there were no video clips. So like when we were doing the nominations, I wasn't using video of the channels. And that was an idea that I never really considered. And we're, we're a video driven platform and I'm, you know, I'm putting the names of channels up on a, you know, on a slide (laughs) and I'm like, Oh damn. Like I could have just grabbed videos, of everybody's channel. And so I'm going to do that going forward. But I was like, how did I miss that? Like that, that was like, that should have been a layup, you know, like I should have, that should have clicked and it just never really did. And part of it was, well, then I got to go to everybody's channel and I got to pull down all these clips and edit them all together. But if I really want to take the awards to the next level, that's what I need to do, you know? So yeah, that was like, you know, that was like, that was, it was, it was tough, not tough, but I mean, it was, very constructive criticism. And I was glad to hear it because it really, it's just like, Oh wow, really? I, I need to do a little bit better with the, with the award. So. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to give Remy Q his props. That was his idea. I don't want to. Okay, was it Remy? Okay. Yeah. It was okay. hundred percent Remy Q. I was, I was super critical of the awards. What happens is I look at things and I, I, again, I want everything to be the best that it can be. And my main gripe and you, and I've, I've we spoke, spoke about this too, yeah. has always been sub count. And, and I appreciate the tears and all this stuff and you trying to improve the awards or making improvements, not even trying, making improvements to the awards. My issue is always going to be sub count. And um, other than that, I think you do a fantastic job. And I'm not going to lie. In the beginning, I was not on board with it whatsoever, <laughs> but I can appreciate and I can, you know, from observing all the things that you do, all the work that gets put into it. So then I'm like, all right, this guy is not phoning it in. This is serious. This is whatever. I'm on board for Brian. So I might not be on board with the CBC awards. I'm on board for Brian. Right. You know what I'm saying? The effort. Right. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, And I I get that. I mean, I understand that not everybody likes awards to compete, you know, and it's really, it's a friendly competition. That's the way I think of it. I, I don't, the awards wasn't to pit channels against each other. And it's really, you know, it's really to be, really to recognize all of the the talent, the creativeness, whether it's the comedy aspect of it or editing or um, information that people put out. So, um, you know, my thought was always it, it, to be a positive and not, and, but again, when you're, when you have only one winner, it's hard not to be there to certain, I'm, I'm very competitive too. So, um, you know, if, if, if I was to lose a, in an award, you know, yeah, it, it, it hurts a little. Um, but you know, I, I think the overall it, it positive, it hurts well, a lot. <laughs> I said, it hurts a lot. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but you know, it's meant to be, it's, it's meant to be fun and, and meant to really just really recognize that the community of, and the amazing work that people are putting in that they, you know, don't really get paid. It's a side thing. It's not their, you know, their regular, you know, job. So, um, yeah, but no, yeah. Of of course, no, and I and and I appreciate that. Like again, I um, you know, I, I I got on board like this year, maybe mainly mainly after. Like I'll be honest with you, and um, like re- frequenting your channel and hearing you talk about it. Marcus is a you know a big supporter of the awards, watching the awards, watching you know the comedy aspects going into it. A lot of people embracing it, new people embracing it. And, you know, I found kind of like, like a love for it more specifically for, like for you. And, and I want to support you because I see all the hard work that goes into it. So I, I appreciate, I appreciate you. So yeah, I, well, I appreciate that. I, I, you know, I never, I never thought of it that way, but that's, you know, yeah. If people, if people like what I'm doing, although the awards may not be for them exactly, but if, if, you know, my effort, which is, which is another way, which, which is nice, which is, I appreciate you recognizing, <laughs> you know, recognizing that. So uh, absolutely. That's great. Um, okay. So you made it through, we, we just, we hit the four um, normal que- or regular questions that I ask all my guests. Now I have two random, the, the, the first random is something that I, a random question I come up with. And then we have a, a list of questions, but my awesome. random question for you is 
I know like last year was a big year for you, for your channel, you know, as far as subscriber count and you did some um, exclusive covers, um, you know, you did some work with Gem Mint and, you know, real, like last year really seemed like a really be a big year for your channel. So do you, I mean, do you have goals to kind of make this something even bigger? Like if you were to, you know, could you make this a full-time thing if, if it, if it grew to that? I mean, what's the goal as you move forward? Cause you, you know, you're on your road to 3000 subs. So what, like, what's your five-year plan? <laughs> no, th th thank you for that. Um, <laughs> so t you're right. 2022 was a monstrous year for me. Like it, it was insane. And it, being able to uh, d develop a working relationship and then a friendship with Gem Mint, having those exclusives drop, developing a friendship, a close friendship with Javon Jordan, meeting a lot of, uh, industry people uh you know no mas comics uh, com the comic mint uh meeting my guy matt wilson uh who's a phenomenal artist uh fury comics nrg comics doing a bunch of con there's so there's a lot of things too that i don't really like put out there but like doing a bunch of con sponsoring con so big shout out to mtg comics and the whole king con crew pressable pressable defects lone wolf comics uh developing a relationship with erod two and two very gary 2022 was absolutely amazing. Um, to say that I want to make this my full time job, I would need to get paid a lot more. By you. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, like people think that you get to a point and it's like, oh my god, they're raking in the money. I get paid like YouTube. It, it's it's peanuts and everything that I make, literally everything that I make for the channel, plus some that I'm adding into it myself. Everything goes back into the channel through giveaways, and you've seen my giveaways. One right, of the giveaways right. that we had in 2022, I, I that night I gave away like $500 in cash, which I, I, I must have been high or something. <laughs> um, yeah, so ideally, I, I would like to find a better balance for this, like to keep moving with YouTube. Like, I absolutely adore doing this, having these conversations in the mix, putting together my videos, working with other people. Um, networking has been a big step for me. Uh, like a lot of people don't know this. I have a lot of idiosyncrasies. I have like bad OCD and I'm like real in real life, like might not be the most approachable person. And through the community, I'm working to kind of like get away from that. Mm, okay. And so, um, but for the channel, I want to keep doing this. I want to keep growing. Uh, you know, the backbone of the channel is, is the channel membership. I want to continue to have the link squad be the best channel membership there is in my eyes you know it, it is um yeah again like for me to step away from my current job which i i, I you know i do well, i have a, a great career i i would have to <laughs> i would have to need some big bucks five-year <laughs> plan i mean ideally like when you look at you know the cats like jim Man, like comic tom and stuff like that uh have a team underneath you so i would love to do content and, and, you know, bring in other people to kind of like edit the videos, you know, show them the ropes, do things like that. So we could like pump out content and then, um, have just a strong team around me. And for, for, you know, right now, I, I think I found that with the link squad, the Illuminati, then the mix crew, Nick's kicks and comics, Remy Q studios, Tyler and Legion of comics. I think that's, that's really important too. finding like the right team, um, that you gel with and have chemistry with, uh, and I just, I just want to grow that. But from a financial standpoint, YouTube needs to pay me more for me to step away from it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially living uh, in New York, right? Yeah. Cost yeah. of living is a little, uh, little crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. For this year, I definitely want to get another exclusive. So that's, uh, or two. So I'll, I'll just throw that out there for, for 2023. Um, I, you know, I've already spoken to a few people um, to try to make that happen. I, I don't like throwing something out there and then not following through on it. So mm -hmm. in my uh, goals video that I had released back in January, oh, I'm like back in January. It's just like <laughs> time, cool. is, time is not since COVID time is not a relative concept <laughs> anymore. Um, and it was like, get another exclusive. So I don't want to just say that and not follow through. So I've, I'm already speaking to people on that. Mm, okay. and, uh, yeah. Like collecting goals. I have some, some big books, like as far as collecting goals on my list for 2023, the biggest one is Hulk, incredible Hulk number one. So the first appearance of the incredible Hulk and, um, yeah, that's that's funny. The five year plan. I'm hope I'm able to still do this and be ha and be happy with it, dude. Like, yeah, not get like, burnt out, right? I mean, yeah, I think not, not get burnt out. I think just 
in anything that you do, like happiness is key. And what happened was before COVID, you know, I was at work and I was focused on so many other things. And then getting into the YouTube thing, meeting new people, seeing what new people are all about, forming these relationships and just realizing like there's things that just aren't important. And happiness is, is the most important thing aside from like mental health and your family and things like that. Like all that stuff will fall into place if you're happy. And I made a concentrated effort to do things that made me happy like in 2021 and 2022. And I, I, I think I'm a better person for it. So we just went all over the place with that question. <laughs> I <laughs> want to be happy. Know, I, I get you. I, I mean, I, I, you know, that's one of the things I try to do is try to focus on things that are in, inside my control, things that I can control. Right. I can't control, you know, the weather, the traffic light, the, you know, the, the traffic. So to try to, you know, if, if I got to commute somewhere and I know there's going to be heavy traffic, well, then I got to get my ass up early and get there yeah. on time, right? You know, because I can't get angry because everybody else is trying to get to work or, you know, <laughs> about traffic or things like that. So I, I really, I've made that shift for, you know, the last couple of years where like those things that I can't control, I don't let them bother me. Why, why am I going to let them, you know, get me upset and, you know, steal my happiness? So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good, a good way to, um, to approach things, whether it's, you know, YouTube or family or, you know, your life in general. So, yeah, no. And it's funny. So I remember, uh, so watching Scott, uh, as Vaughn, uh, was it 82? Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. Scotty? So his, uh, show last week, it reminded me, you know, he opens up with this serenity prayer. So back in the day, uh, I used to go, <laughs> this is such a stupid story. Um, <laughs> St. Mark's in the city. So St. Mark's between second and third. I don't know if you're familiar um, in the city. So I was like 14 years old. So there was a club there. And what happened was at 730, there was kind of like a support group meeting. So it wasn't necessarily like AA or, or whatever, but it was just a support group. So what happens is if you went to that support group, the meeting was at seven o'clock. You got a stamp on your hand. And that stamp granted you access to the club that opened up at 1130. Oh. <laughs> so I, I would get my stamp and all that stuff. And I say this just to tell you. So I was like, what, 14? And that serenity prayer like changed my life back then. And every support group meeting, they would say the serenity prayer, right? right Lord, grant right. me the whatever. And then when Scott said that the other day, I was just like, oh, wow. And I wish people knew about that serenity prayer more. Uh, and it's not just associated with, you know, people with substance abuse or things like that. If it was just like people just knew about it and it wasn't right, just right. something that it's all oh, that's for people with like issues and things like that, which is not the case. Like that serenity prayer. Those are words to like live and die by. It, it's 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 amazing. And I wish more people knew about that. Well, yeah, that's and you know, you mentioned Scott Vaughn. He I had discovered, found his channel, was watching some of his videos and then. I went back and he had a video where he shared his, you know, personal story and battle with, you know, drugs and things. And I was, as soon as I watched that video, I'm like, wow, this guy just, he put everything out there in this, you know, in this video. And I was, you know, hooked on his channel just because of the things that he was sharing. And now he's kind of taken that, you know, forward with a live show and trying to, um, you know, discuss some of those things. And I, I think a lot of us have talked to like Nick's, Nick's kicks and comics with, uh, Ignacio, they talk about it on their Thursday show, you know, mental health and maybe things that we normally don't talk about, um, kind of getting some of those things out there with, you know, through the YouTube channel and, and, you know, comic books. But we're talking sometimes we're talking some serious, you know, life stuff, mental health and, you know, things like that, which is which is really good. Yeah, I think it's important. I mean, there's there's only, you know, so many times we could talk about the Incredible Hulk or Spider-Man, no. uh, you know, once you develop those strong bonds, because that's all we all enjoy talking about comic books and things like that. But that's all surface. So what happens is, especially like, you know, when I got to meet everybody at C2E2. So, yeah, we're talking about comic books. Oh, yeah. What are you on the hunt for? All right. What are we going to talk about now? It's we're like a half an hour into day one. We got like right, three right. days to be together. <laughs> and um yeah, just diving deeper and forming forming those bonds, I, I think is is super important, and like just getting past like the uh, superficial stuff of comic books. Like we all love comic books, but we all have things going on in our lives, and 
you know, maybe, you know, I need a support system or I need help or, or something like that. And, um, developing developing these relationships through the the community has really helped me and and things like that like like remy q i i talk to remy q on the phone all, all the time or we'll text and stuff like that nick's kicks and comics um so it's it's like all right it starts on on youtube then it's instagram right. then it's just like right, you, got, you got my phone number now like hit me up you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah no that's that's you know the the comic book is that that instant connection right but then you yeah. said you know then you you begin to go a little bit deeper as you get to know, you know, everybody. And it sounds like Heroes Con is going to be the big, you know, love fest for the community this uh, <laughs> this year, which is good. I mean, yeah. everybody seems very excited about, You're going? Uh, you know, that that show in June. Uh, you'll be there? Uh, I'm going to try to make it. Yeah. My goal is to, I've been talking with um, Comic Journey. We're, we're talking, uh, we're talking road trip. Oh, God, God I, bless I, you. Know, I don't know if I'll survive driving with Comic Journey, but we'll see. Yeah, hopefully he's in the trunk, right? <laughs> um no heroes con is going to be a blast um yeah there's it's a lot of people going to that one a lot of yeah. people going to that one it's going to be my first time in north carolina uh you know i already bought my tickets and stuff like that i just have to book my airfare um like these things are, are always good like meeting people from the community and things like that um well 99 percent of the time they're good right <laughs> <laughs> I, I have some running so whatever but <laughs> All right, so that was my random question, and we we kind of hit a bunch of different things in that one. So now I have a list of uh, fifty questions. Ooh. Just give me a number one through fifty, wherever we land. That'll be your your final question. Uh, four, four. I think we already covered this. If money was no object, what would you do uh, all day? It sounds like you don't want to ask that question. Uh, well, I no, I mean, I think I think you would just dive a little bit more into YouTube, wouldn't you? Yeah, basically. Okay, can we re-roll? <laughs> is, is that an option? <laughs> sure. Yeah, we'll give you we'll give you another one. What's something that uh, you've been dying to ask from this list and no one's ever like landed on it? Hmm. Let, let's leave it up to you. Can we do that? Sure. Let me see. Let me let me peruse the list. Um, let's see. Tyler. <laughs> I'm scrolling a list. Hmm. I'm not, not, let's see. Uh, all right. Here's a good one. What celebrity would you like to meet uh, for coffee? Oh, that's an interesting one. What celebrity would I like to meet for coffee? <sighs> <laughs> this is so stupid man <laughs> <laughs> probably Ghostface killer um i'm a big wu-tang clan uh fan since you know junior high school i think Ghostface killer if like you watch his interviews and things like that he is such an eccentric guy um from a not only from an artistic standpoint but just a world point of view standpoint like he, he's he's out there um and i just feel like he will be like super fun to sit down it, it'll either be super fun or it'll be like the complete opposite depending on what <laughs> killer you get but um definitely sit down with ghostface killer chop it up um yeah i've been a big fan of wu-tang clan specifically ghostface since since they came out in what 92 93 um i was able to see one of his concerts uh i want to say 2018 19 and um yeah, I'm just a big fan. I would love to chop it up. And I think it would be fun. Um, I tried to meet him actually a few times. My brother worked in his building. So my brother was like the uh, head of security in a building where they worked. Okay. And I would go all of a sudden I had to visit my brother all the time. <laughs> and I would never I would never run into ghosts, which is hilarious. And he and Ghost, you know, had like a, a relationship, uh, a friendship, Paul's relationship. And. I would always go over there to try to meet him and I never got to, but I have like right, right here, there's a big autograph poster of Ghostface that he signed to me. And this was what, 97, 96, 97. Um, but yeah, I would, I would love to like chop it up and kick it with him. Wow. All right. That's interesting. Yeah. I think, you know, band musicians, you know, I, I think we, we all kind of have a connection to certain bands that we, or rappers that we, you know, we've listened to over the years and, um, you know, kind of have followed, so yeah, I, I I could see that. Yeah, now I want to now I want to meet Ghostface. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, make that happen. Don't don't put it in your goals, but 
you know, for 20, don't, don't put it on video, but let's, let's make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> so that was it. You made it through all, all of the questions. So anything else before we wrap up, anything else you want to mention about yourself, your channel, anything you got coming up? Um, coming up, uh, you know, regular video content, Monday, Wednesdays, Friday in the mix. Um, I, we spoke a little bit about this backstage and, you know, if you don't mind, I'm just going to you know, talk sure, about yeah. it. And it's like, um, don't be afraid to approach, you know, bigger channels. Like I I'm considered, which I don't think I am. Um, uh, you know, don't be afraid to approach bigger channels and try to get them on your show. I think, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm the odd man out and I'm being, punished for my sub count in a way so you know I, I feel alienated sometimes where i'm you know i'm not invited to uh you know 411 and uh you know i'm not in the shout out videos and things like that not that i i i need to be but i'm you know i'm just making you know a point uh you know don't be afraid to reach out to these other channels what's the worst that you know somebody's gonna say is no or i don't have the time right now most of the time and i you know i've done that on my show as i was coming up reaching out to gem min wink inc and and no one has ever told me no and from that i developed some great friendships and relationships so don't be afraid to reach out to these other channels and try to get them on yeah no it's a good point and like you said we were talking about a little bit of a backstage um I, you know my focus is usually on smaller channels to try to just help promote them and pump them up but yeah it's we it also you know don't be you know, be mindful of the bigger channels. And like yeah. you said, because, um, you know, most time I've reached out to some bigger channels and, you know, they've been very responsive. Like on Instagram, mm -hmm. if I had had questions when I was coming up with the idea for the comic book community awards, I had reached out or even just reaching out to the winners. Like I reached out to Jim Mint, you know, he had won an award and sent him his trophy. He was very thankful, you yeah. know, and so people are very, um, you know, uh, approachable, but yeah. I think sometimes you fall into that trap where you're like, oh, well, you know, it's a big channel. He's, he's not going to want to, you know, yeah. come on my channel. So, but no, yeah. it's, it's, it's a good point that we should, it works both ways, right? Not only smaller channels, but the bigger channels. Yeah, no, absolutely. And then it's like, um, you could still use that, you know, opportunity to kind of leverage talking about other channels, right? So we're here with shout out to Scotty Vaughn and we, we spoke about him and hopefully people are watching this and they, you know, want to go and check out Scotty's content. You know, we spoke about Remy Q and Nick's kicks and a bunch right. of other people. And um, hopefully people will go and check, check out their content as well. So it's, it's still kind of like business thrown in there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but, you know. yeah, yeah, no. And Rob and I, Rob was Rob fat stacks was, was my guest uh, last week. And he, you know, we got into a little bit about um, C3 and the mm -hmm. effort that, you know, you were like as one of his right hand men, you know, and Mark and, and just the effort that you guys put in. And, you know, we talked a little bit about how I'm, I'm really excited for this year's event. And I was just, a, you know, I got involved late last year and was a very small part of it, but the, 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 the outpour of support from the community in such a, you know, short period of time to support that and raise all that money. I'm, I'm so excited about the event for, you know, for this coming year. Yeah, absolutely. I think C3 last year was definitely one of the highlights of my year. I, when it was all said and done, that that last sat Sunday, right? So, you know, we went, did the auction on Rob's channel, and then we kind of said our goodbyes quickly backstage. And <laughs> I laid down like right away. But <laughs> reflecting on it during the week, man, I shed a tear. It was such a a good thing for everybody to come together and raise money for cancer awareness. And just the outpouring of support from everybody in the community, the money that we raised over twenty three thousand dollars is mind boggling, dude. Mind boggling. Yeah, that and was. and it's only tapping a small corner of the community. Like this thing is is big, right? So we have everybody that's in our little corner, but there are so many people that's like untapped that we can kind of hopefully get them involved so that we can raise even more money. I. That Saturday, oh no, that Friday on In the Mix after we got off, I, yeah, I just sat there with the dumb face on, like in the, in the right. chair. In my yeah, head. yeah. Well, you got, you, I mean, you guys really kicked it off really well on that show. I mean, there was, you know, even just your own your own donations that you had made, and they're just the the entire show um, was yeah, like, I, wow, this this thing. You know, when when I saw that, I was like, wow, this this weekend could be really big, and it turned out to be. 
Yeah, it it, it was it was in, in insane. So my goal for my show was twenty five hundred dollars, and we we smashed that. I think we made almost eight thousand on on that Friday night. And um, there's a lot of work that goes into it. So big shout out to Rob Fats Rob Fatstacks, Mark from Legion of Comics. I don't know if you got to see a little bit of the tyrant that I am backstage. <laughs> I, I take everything super serious. Like I like being on camera. I'm like super jovial because this is my escape, right? Like, like being in front of the camera, I'm happy to do this, but I try to, I take everything serious and, you know, in real life and something like, like C3, which is like cancer awareness, raising money. I'm not going to lie. I, I was a little bit of a tyrant and, um, <laughs> I apologize to all those that I angered and I'm apologizing in advance for C3 2020. Uh, I, I just take it so serious and I expect everyone to do the same. And that's, that's kind of my problem, I guess. Right. Like um, having these expectations of people and for them to deliver. So, well, yeah, I, and I think, I think it was, um, you know, the, the year two really made a big leap from year one, you know, uh, Chris cardboard crazies did a great job year one, but, I don't think a lot of people knew about it. And then, yeah. you know, when Rob got involved in year two and then it, and put, you know, put the kind of team around him, it really kind of blew up because it was now more, more eyeballs on it. And I think, like I said, this year will just be even bigger. Um, I think um, uh, short boxed who was on uh, Rob's channel last week mentioned, you know, they want to get involved and help, you know, donate and support. So, you know, if you, you start to bring in, you know, companies and things like that, I mean, I think it could even be, you know, you know, bigger and bigger and better. And Rob is probably the perfect guy to run it because he's very even keeled and very organized. You know, he's very, he, you know, he, he likes to plan and, and, mm -hmm. and have things organized. So I think mm -hmm. he was a good, a good fit to, um, you know, take it over in year two. So. Yeah, no, Rob was definitely the, definitely the right guy. And I was happy to, you know, be with him almost every step of, of the way along with Mark. It was uh, it was so gratifying to be able to do that and and raise that amount amount of money for cancer awareness, and it's awesome that you know he started his membership. So big congrats to Rob, where all the revenue oh, yeah. generated from his channel goes to C three. So that's absolutely phenomenal, man. Big shout out to Rob Fats. Yeah, he's he's such a great dude, man. Yeah, no, looking forward to it. So yeah, I'm I'm hopeful, you know, um, that we can like you know, like I said, I was just a very small part of it. So hopefully, you know, I can get more involved, you know, this year and then we can, um, you know, just bring more and more people into, you know, into it so that we can, you know, make it even bigger and better. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, all right. Anything else that you want to mention before we, uh, before we wrap up? Well, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dude, I just want to thank you again. Wait, for wait, your mic's muted. I can't hear you. Oh no, wait, no, sorry. Wasn't that the dumbest thing in the world? Yes, sir. I, don't know. I, don't know. I wasn't sure. Like, was this like a running joke that I missed last night, or I was like, you know, or yeah. So it was like we were talking backstage beforehand. I had like the dumbest idea. I was just like, yo, you know what we should do? Every couple of minutes, somebody just say your mic is muted, and they all groaned at me. So that's why when we start saying it, we're just dying laughing because we understand how stupid it is. It, was. Just... it, it, it worked. <laughs> it was. It was funny. It was... <laughs> It was the dumbest thing in the world, man. And, yeah, but I appreciate those guys for coming with me on the journey and stuff. And that's why we like we rebranded the show because I don't think it's fair for it to be called in the mix with DJ Links if everybody is with me for the ride. But I do get 100 percent of the revenue from the Super Chats. We don't split it. So <laughs> watch out. They could be they could be looking for a contract soon. I know. Right. <laughs> well, DJ, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Great to you know, this is kind of a selfish show for me because um, it's an opportunity for me to kind of just sit, you know, chat with somebody one-on-one -on -one and get to know them a little bit better. So, but, you know, I, it's what Gary B and even small town collectibles, you know, their interview shows were like the reason why I wanted to start it because I really enjoy watching those. So I said, well, now I get the opportunity to produce a, you know, a piece of content that hopefully others will enjoy, but I also get to then meet, you know, community members and really get to know them a little bit better. So I really, really appreciate you coming on and, and answering all the questions. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, sir. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you soon. DJ, take yeah. care. Take care, buddy.